Hello and welcome to another video. <laughs> what I'm about to show you is more some interesting arithmetic and not how I would actually do this in practice. Most programming languages have better ways to do this and most processors have better ways to do this. I figured I would put this at the beginning because man, the number of times people only watch the first 15 seconds of the video and then leave a comment. Oh, it's just so many. Anyway, okay, so we're talking about swapping today and we're specifically gonna show you a few tricky ways to swap variables without a third variable. Now, typically when you think about swapping, let me grab two objects here. Uh, typically when you think about swapping, let's say that you know I have a uh, silver cube in this hand and blue cube in this hand, typically to swap the two, I would place one into a third variable, move this variable to here, and then pick up the variable from, the, from that one. But in this example, I needed to have a third variable in order to do that, that, uh, that trade there. And I'm going to show you a tricky way to swap specifically integers without using a third variable. And then we're going to explain the math behind it. Okay, so, uh, and again, swapping in Python, normally you would say, you know, you had x equals 2 and y equals 3. You can do this little trick to build a tuple of the two values, then unpack the tuple. Uh, and Python even has specialization to automatically do the swap without even building the tuple. So this is normally how you would swap in Python. but uh, for the sake of discussion, we are going to make a swap function that's going to take in the two values and then return a new tuple. You wouldn't do this, of course, but uh, in order to demonstrate this cool trick, we're going to do this. Uh, now, if you're writing in like C or C++, you might do this with pointers and like this function would take references and it would actually make sense to do it there. Uh, it still wouldn't make sense to do it there. Let me clarify, because there are, you know, there is certain C code that will get compiled into a single uh, processor instruction that will swap instead of having to, you know, use a swap function. But anyway, uh, so the little trick that I have learned uh, is to, um, oops, yeah, actually that will work. Uh, <laughs> let's write it out without this. X equals X, X or Y. So I think it looks better there. Y equals X, X or Y. And then x equals x, x or y. And then if we return the two values back, they will have been swapped. So if we take these two here, let's print x and y, and then say x and y equals swap. x and y, and again, just a reminder, don't leave a comment. This is absurd, and you would never do this in Python. Uh, you would just swap using tuples. Um, but, you know, have a little imagination for a second. Okay, so this little math here, which looks like it's just doing the same thing three times in a row. Now, there's no third variable here, so we're not actually writing a swap. Uh, but if we run this, you'll see that it is able to swap the variables. In fact, it's able to swap negative variables too, which was the other thing that I was worried about. Now, uh, how do I store state? How do I basically take state, destroy a variable? Uh, you know, XOR is not gonna preserve the original value of X. Uh, and then run this twice and then have the actual value spit out the other end. And that is sort of the trick of XOR. It kind of allows you to store a little bit of state. Now, if we go over what XOR is, uh, it is an exclusive OR. So if you have zero XOR zero, you're going to get zero. If you have one XOR one, and you also get a nice little face too, uh, you're also going to get zero. But if you have one of them being a one, you're going to get back a one back. Um, yeah, so it is an exclusive or, it's one or the other. Whereas if you think about logical or, uh, logical or is any of them, either both one or, or either. So if you did like one or one, you're gonna get one. Uh, one or zero, you're gonna get one still. So that's kind of the difference between a logical or and a bitwise or. Uh, the other thing that I've talked about in the past is logical or is short circuiting. So as soon as logical or finds a single value, it doesn't need to evaluate the rest of it. Whereas bitwise or needs to have all of the operands present in order to figure out exclusively whether, uh, sorry, I said bitwise or, I meant exclusive or, uh, needs to have both sides to know whether only one of them is a uh, bit. Now, if we take our example here, uh, let's actually do the two and the three example because that's a little bit simpler. Then we'll show the negative one. Uh, so if we have x equals 2 and y equals 3, if we show the binary representation of x and the binary representation of y, uh, as we transform these, you'll kind of see that this XOR math allows us to store a little bit of state inside the you know, slightly destroyed variable. 
Uh, so let's do the first operation, x equals x, x or y. And if we print the bin, uh, actually we don't even have to print, we can just do bin x. If we print the binary here, you'll see that uh, these two ones have swapped the variables, or swapped the, um, the ones and zeros here. So basically if you XOR with one, you're always gonna get the opposite bit pattern here. So, uh, so zero XOR one is going to give us a one, and one XOR one is going to give you a zero. And so this is basically a way to negate the value uh, for instance, if you have you know, Q equal to 103 and we print the binary of Q, and if we XOR this with a whole bunch of ones, which you can get from negative one and two's complements, then Q XOR negative one, you'll see that we have, sw we have flipped all of the, uh, well, actually, because we got a negative out. Um, <laughs> how do we make it non-negative? <laughs> Uh, let's just time, multiply that by negative one. That way we don't. That way we don't. Uh, Python has a little quirk in the way that it displays negatives in in binary. It doesn't give you the nice little flip. Oh, actually, we we need to add one to this because two's gone. Anyway, just trust me. If you <laughs> we could we could do it this way. We could just uh, XOR it with a bunch of ones. Yeah, there we go, instead of having negative one. Okay, cool, so now you can see that it's flipping the ones to zeros and the zeros to ones. And of course, we have a bunch of extra ones on the front because you had extra implicit zeros here. Okay, anyway, so that's that's kind of the, the neat thing about XORing with one. Uh, XORing with zero, if you do it repeatedly, it's going to leave the value alone. So um, we'll show another example where we're actually XORing with uh, not a zero value here. But let's do the next step, which is that y equals x, x, or y. And let's actually print all of them first before we do that, so we can kind of show what's going here. Uh, so if we do y equals x, x, or y, and then show the binary representation of y, you'll see that we have now stored the state of the stored state into y. Uh, we have taken the xor of 0, 1, and we have flipped this bit here. We've kind of taken the state of y, put it into x, then taken the state of y and x, and then put it into y, and now we're gonna recover the original state in x by doing x uh, equals x, x or y. And if we do bin x and bin y, uh, you'll see that we've been able to swap these two variables. Uh, so it's an, a neat little bit of math here where, <laughs> where we use, we abuse. <laughs> Uh, XOR's way to store state into other numbers and uh, kind of trade the the data back and forth while keeping the two numbers around. Uh, there are other swaps that don't involve third variables. Uh, you know, of course, there's exchange, which is how your processor is going to do it. Uh, the other swap that I've used before is an add swap, <laughs> where basically you add the number into the other one, then subtract out the number, and then add the third number together. It's very similar to how XOR swap works, uh, which is that you're you know, building up a third, third number that's neither of the two numbers, but keeping enough information around to recover the two numbers. Uh, and um, add swap has one downside that XOR swap doesn't, which is that if the numbers overflow, <laughs> well, then all bets are off and you don't really you can't really swap if you're overflowing. Uh, Python doesn't have overflow because it has arbitrary precision integers. Uh, but again, this is all this is all just silly math and not something you would ever use because there are better ways to swap. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to show this off because I thought this was really cool when I was learning to program, and maybe you will too. And if you have additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.